804 here in the Breakfast Club. Brian Angus, delighted to have you on board this morning. Delighted, uh, delighted to touch base with a guy that I've known for a long, long time after all my 20 years uh, with the fan and uh, spoke to him on a regular basis. You all know him as the 1996 Cy Young winner. Pat Hankin joins me from his home down in Michigan. How are you, Pat? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm delighted to hear your voice again, and uh, you know you're part of the family here with this this Blue Jay team. But I, I want to first of all, before we get into the great rotation that you've got to work with, and and Pat, you know the excitement is all is, is people can't wait again this year for spring training to start with the excitement that that Beastie and Alex Anthopoulos have got going after the big trade. But you know. You talked. I talked to you off air about the amount of you know you're getting a few interview requests from guys like me and all the rest. But Gibby, my dear friend Gibby, uh, came on with me the day on the day he got the job and came up here and was announced. He must have done about seventeen thousand interviews, Pat. I mean, he was just. I guess you just get into so much adrenaline flowing that you'll just go ahead and do it for a couple of days. But I, I spoke to him when he went back home down to Texas, and he was absolutely worn out. But you must be delighted to have him back in the fold. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, I built a relationship with him when I played in 04. He was our first base coach, and um, it was a great experience for me. He's a good guy, and it, you, what you see is what you get. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of uh, why he's been so successful. So when he came on, i got to tell you, my nickname in the business, a very cruel nickname for a guy in Radio Pat, and, and, uh, is Mumbles. And uh, without going into all the detail, but Gibby's nickname is Mumbles as well. So I suggested to him, Pat, that, you know, when he hadn't filled his coaching staff, I lobbied on air here for the bullpen coach job. And he said, well, Mumble, you, 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 you know, you haven't and you know how Gibby talks. And he's, you know, basically he said, what experience? You haven't had much major league experience. I had none. I said, but that's not important. I said, I want the job so that when you phone down, I can translate what you're saying because no one else is going to be able to understand you. So we went back and forth and had some fun with it. And, you know, I'm delighted to see you got the job. But come on, Pat, I mean, what is a bullpen coach's, a bullpen coach's job really all about? I mean, I think of old Sully sitting down there on a bucket turned upside down watching the game. The guy calls you down, the manager or the bench boss, and says, get up a lefty, get up a righty, and you go ahead and do it. I mean, there's more to it, I know, than that. But not a young, fit guy like you, a Cy Young Award winner. You don't fit the mold of a bullpen coach to me. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You're supposed to be like an old fat guy with a ruddy face who likes to smoke a cigar and have a couple of whiskeys, you know, pass his notes to some of the pretty girls in the stands for the guys in the bullpen. I'm joking, of course. Yeah, you know what? You know, back in the day, I think not that long ago, catchers were always bullpen coaches because they needed that extra catcher. Now things have changed. Every team's carrying a bullpen catcher that helps out with the catching part of it. The backup catcher comes down from the dugout, so we, we are equipped with two catchers. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of bullpens go to a pitching coach or a, an, a, an assistant to the pitching coach, and I think that's really my role. That was my role in 2011. And uh, that'll be my role again this year with Pete Walker. Yeah, Pete Walker pitched, of course, for Blue Jays fans. Know that Pete did. Pete play at the same time you did. You know, I think in '04, my last year, Pete was in spring training with us. I think he sensed that he may not make the team. I'm not sure. I'd have to talk to him about it. But he ended up going to Japan or Taiwan or something. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah, midway through spring training, I can't remember where he chose to play. But uh, so we did to cross paths briefly as players. You had Tommy John surgery in 2001, didn't you, Pat? Yes, I did. I was with the Orioles at the time, and uh, I felt the pop and a burn in my elbow in the first inning. I pitched uh, seven innings that day. I actually remember the game well because it was against uh, my hometown Tigers, where I grew up. And uh, the next day, I, you know, when I went in that night, I thought, I'll be fine. It'll be all right. And the next day when I woke up, I knew that something was wrong. I knew that... Uh, when I grabbed the door handle, it zinged me, and when I was washing my hair, it was zinging me. So I knew that uh, I had an issue, and, and lo and behold, it sure did. I had Tommy John. Well, if anyone ever wonders if Tommy John's surgery works or not, Pat Hankin, uh, my guest here this morning, is a perfect example of it. I mean, he left with his name all over the Blue, Jeans, uh, Blue Jays team record book, ranks in the top five and wins with 107. You're going to like to hear these stats, Pat. Starts with 238 innings pitched, like 1,650 almost, winning percentage, three-time All-Star, 14 years in the majors, of course won the Cy Young in 1996. Once again, congratulations on a fabulous career, Pat. And you know, the reason I mentioned all that is because now if we flip the page uh, and, and have a look at the trade that's been made and the pitching 
you know, lineup that these guys, that the Blue Jays have got that you're going to work with now, with all that credibility behind you, certainly, you know, when you go to talk to these guys, I'm sure they're going to listen and be wanting to take your advice. And that's why I think you make such a great bullpen coach. Well, I appreciate that. You know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, you, I think the biggest guy we got is, is Mark Burley. I really do, because this guy is so steady. He's so consistent. He is a, a guy that when you, when you come into the ballpark as a position player, the first thing they'll do when they get there is they'll figure out who's pitching. Who's pitching today for us? Oh, yeah, it's Burley. And it, it automatically just puts the position players into a good mood. They know he's going to pitch fast. They know he's going to uh, throw a lot of strikes. He's not going to walk people. He's very consistent. He's going to give our bullpen the rest that they need. It's a very consistent pitcher, and I think that that was a big addition to this club. Not only that, I heard he was a great guy in the locker room. So uh, I'm excited to get started and, and get working with a guy like that. I have a lot of uh, admiration for him. I know what he's done over the last 12 years has been, has been very impressive. So it, that's a big, big part of it. Also, what it does is it provides the rest and the proper rest for the relievers, which you'll see the bullpen will have a better year this year because of our starting pitching. Yeah, and all we have to do is work out the, uh, the pit bull laws so that Mark and his wife, you know, funny thing, people forget the human side of things. Hey, Pat, that happens all the time. We just look at the player and what he's done. But, you know, guys, he was stunned, obviously, when he was traded. And, and, and the first thing his wife said to him, of course, they love their, their, their dogs. Pit bulls aren't allowed here. For those of you who are outside of Ontario watching this, they got to work out what they're going to do with their dogs before they come up. But you know what? I think that's part of the coaching uh, job as well, is working with guys and all the little problems that they've got, listening to them, their very human problems, and helping them get through them. I look at the rotation this year of probably being something like Josh Johnson at one, Brandon Morrow at two, Burley at three, maybe Ricky at four, and J.A. Happ at five. I mean, that's just something you can debate about. But certainly the addition of Johnson and Burley to that lineup is going to help, I think, take some of the pressure off Ricky, who had obviously a very bad year last year. Yeah, no doubt. You know, when they announced that I was the bullpen coach, I got a quick text from Ricky. It was pretty cool. He just said, oh, man, I'm really fired up. I'm looking forward to working with you. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're going to get Ricky back on track. There's no doubt. He, you know, everybody has a bad year. I, you know, I, I tried to tell him that last year. Even Roy Halladay did, and, and Greg Maddox did. So, you know, these are these are you know borderline. Well, one's for sure Hall of Fame. I think Doc's a Hall of Fame too. Right. I think, you know, you're looking at two Hall of Famers, and they had bad years too. So Ricky's, you know, turn the page. Come into spring training. You got a zero ERA. You got zero innings pitched. It's a fresh start. And I think it's going to be a big, big burden off his shoulders having Burley and Johnson. I agree, 100%. Tell us a little bit about uh, the bullpen. You don't have to go through every guy, but just when you sat down and thought about the bullpen that you're going to be working with, what were some of the first thoughts that came to your mind that got you all lit up? Well, obviously Santos coming back being healthy. I think his stuff is unbelievable. He's dynamite. He's electric. And uh, we're we're hoping that he's going to be ready to go. Uh, Jansen has just been a robot for the last couple seasons, and I mean that in a good way. Um, <clears throat> Oliver, I think, you know, we got to try to convince him to come out of retirement. He's, he's definitely a big addition as well. He's a consistent guy. He's a proven veteran guy, a guy that other players are looking up to. And he just goes out there and throws strikes and throws the ball down in a way as good as anybody that plays the game. You know, Delabar is another guy that's just got an electric fastball, right. a power changeup. Uh, it's, it's exciting, you know. Then, then we add Lincoln to the mix, too, and Loop. Uh, it's a deep bullpen, I think. Uh, Brett Cecil's in the mix, I think, as well with uh, the lefty lefty thing. So I think that what the what the front office has done by going out and making those trades last year, although they kind of flew under the radar, and people are like, "What? What's this? This? You know, these guys are going to add depth to our team, and it's going to really show dividends this well, year." Let me talk to you about because you've been around all kinds of different times over your 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 storied career in the major league. This year, when the Blue Jays go to spring training, expectations are very high and they are expected to win this year. That is completely different from years gone by where the Yankees and the big bad Boston Red Sox have had all the money and all the players and the Jays weren't expected to do well. Which is it you would rather have, the pressure of being expected to win or flying under the radar and coming in as the underdog? Oh, I like this pressure situation. I think that all the players are coming into spring training excited. You know, the guys that I've spoken to have been have been just, just elated. They're just so excited. They want spring training to start right now. I read a little blip about what Brett Laurie said how we're we're going to the, we want to go to the World Series. These are all things that haven't been talked about a lot in camp. So it's exciting. I think that uh you know, you got to you got to just go out and do it. You know, there's lots of teams that have won the off season. 
Now it's time to win the win the season, and that that's the important thing. There's lots of teams, like I said, the Red Sox two years ago won the offseason, and look what happened. The Marlins won the offseason last year, and look what happened. So we have to just go out and do it. Paper means nothing to me, and I think it's just a matter of us getting healthy, doing the little things, and sometimes coaching, you just got to get out of the way. And, you know, you got a guy like Mark Burley out there, you just got to handle the ball and say, let's go, baby. And, and I think that's what's going to happen. 202 innings last year. He's a workhorse, kind of like Jim Clancy was in the old days with the Blue Jays, a guy you could knew could go out there and get you six or seven innings all the time. So, I mean, and you can't blame the fans for being excited. It's been so long since anything really good. Of course, the Argonauts won the Grey Cup this year, which was a fantastic story, and the Rock have won a couple of championships in lacrosse, but really don't get much press. But when you look at that pitching lineup that you just talked about, Pat Henkin, and then you start to look at something like Jose Rios leading off Milky Cabrera, Jose Bautista, for goodness sake, back, Edwin Encarnacion coming off of 42 two home runs. you got a guy like Brett, Brett Laurie who is hitting second down at five and JP and Colby and Adam Lind and on and on it goes with guys that are sitting on the bench who could be starters for any other team you know in, in the league and the last time John Buck was here he was like an all-star and we haven't even seen Emilio Bonifacio play yet or Mesa Asturias so no wonder excitement's high eh? No, no question. I mean, our lineup has just got so deep with that Reyes yeah. trade and, uh, you know, with Bonifacio. The things I've heard about this Bonifacio guy is unbelievable. This guy can fly. He can play all the different positions. I mean, you talk about super utility. You know, he, this guy could probably start, like you said, with a lot of clubs. So it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be a, a, a battle in spring training between uh, Asturias and, and Bonifacio. And, uh, you know, we're going to just let the, let the chips fall. And we'll see what happens. Pat, the NCAA bowl games are coming up. Do you have a team in them? You know what? I'm not a big college sports fan. Really? I, eh? I, uh, I'm more of a baseball fan. So for me, I'm not. I, I really don't follow it. To be honest with you. Well, that's okay. I, I mean, I just wondered. Some of the guys, you know, are huge, uh, huge college bowl fans. And I was just laughing at the number of bowl games there are right now. It's all going to change. But uh, I just thought I'd, I'd mention that to you. Listen, man. Uh, you're going to be in the bullpen with the team this year. I know you guys can't wait to get down to spring training. It's not that far away. Once the Super Bowl's over, we're into the dog days, and we'll be pecking for it even more by the time that rolls around. Looking forward to seeing how you get on with this team this year and continued success, and all the best for this year, Pat. All right, thanks for having me. Back. I appreciate it. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. There he is, Pat Hankin. Now, there's a guy who came back after Tommy John surgery, and look at the success he had. And the reason I mention that is you know all the injuries that the Toronto Blue Jays had to their starting pitching rotation last year. And with the trades that Alex Anthopoulos has made, he shored up that starting staff and the bullpen. And I haven't even started to talk about the Kyle Drabecks of this world and all the rest that were part of our starting rotation last year who are going to be looking to get back, get healthy, probably going to start the year down in Buffalo, which is another great move because a lot of people in this area are going to go down to Buffalo to watch the Blue Jays farm team play. I mean, you talk about deep. If those guys come back from their surgeries the same way that Pat Henkin recovered from his Tommy John surgery, then that team is really going to be something to reckon with this year. It's 8-18. I'm going to take a quick break. Sam Mitchell, the former head coach of the Toronto Raptors from 2006, right, 2005 right through for four seasons, coach of the year in 2006 and 2007, joins me from his home in Atlanta. You don't want to miss this. Sam's going to talk about what this Toronto Raptor team has to do to get back in the winning ways. I'm Brian Angus. This is The Breakfast Club. Delighted to have you on board on this day 12-12-12. Wednesday, December the 12th, it's never going to happen again. Is that good luck or is that bad luck? I'll leave it up to you. I'll be right back. The bench is on.